Welcome to our first small introduction video into Python for NVMet. Well, the integration of Python into the NVMet system is the first big step to integrate um, different kinds of scripting, data analysis and data visualization into our NVMet software suite. And later on, all the different applications from Leonardo over spaces to Mont and so on will probably have the possibility where it makes sense to integrate with Python. To start with version 5, uh, Leonardo is the first software where we have integrated the Python environment because we thought, well, Leonardo is the point where most people want to use the features of Python, such as data integration, data visualization, and data analysis. So let's have a small look what we need to do and how integrating Python in your application works. First of all, here is Leonardo with a normally opened file. And we can use the um, Python interface for different kinds of files, files generated by NVMet itself, but also files generated within the Leonardo environment. So for example, you may know the Surface Grid Explorer to take this as an example. So if we do have a time series of files, like we have in this example here, surface temperatures over a range of time from six in the morning to the next day, and then in the afternoon, we can click, for example, with the right mouse on a button and say, explore this grid. This means collect all the different data from all the different time suites from the NVMet simulation and make the possibility to make a chart of it. So this explorer is not new. So if we select the whole data range and for example, surface temperature, we can generate a graph, export it to Excel or make a hard copy out of it. So the new part is this little small button here actually is a very easy step to integrate Data Studio into our analysis work. We just need to press the button and then a file, an ASCII file is generated and Data Studio is opened. So let's have a deeper look at it. First of all, there are different layers of information in Data Center. So this is the primary view. That means it's the overview of the files you have loaded. Actually, two files are supported in the interface, but there are more file possibilities. You have a collection of different scripts and most important, you have the option to control your Python environment. So let's have a small look what is controlling the Python environment means. NVMet is shipped with a small distribution of Python we call the embedded distribution. That means this is Python with some modules installed, very few modules installed. But most of the very important modules like NumPy or Pandas are not installed yet you probably will like to use them. So the first thing normally, if you have a new and a fresh NVMet installation, what we need to do is to install these packages to Python in order to have access to them and in order to run most of the scripts that we probably would like to run. There is the small sign here, this info sign, uh, which indicates that uh, Data Studio recognizes that probably most of the packages are yet missing. So it makes it very easy for you to, re uh, to over-install these. Just press the button and it tells you that some things are missing like NumPy, Matplotlib or Pandas. So just say OK and your software will connect to the internet, to the Python servers and will download Pandas, for example, and all the connected libraries that belong to Pandas for data analysis. So actually you won't have to do anything, just sit down a while and wait that the packages are downloaded from the internet and then wait until they are installed. So here we are. And after the installation, there was a small information, we can recall that by going back here to run pip and list packages. Here you have a list of all the different packages These are now installed. This includes pandas, um, numpy, and all different matplotlibs, all different um, imp very important libraries you need to use. Also, 
If you need to run other commands for pip, this is integrated the pip shell for installing other modules. You can directly access them from Data Studio, so no need to interfere with some terminal or command line driven um, Python commands. So let's return to Data Center and see what it is. So you have this active project here and you have a data file which is loaded. So in the very moment, this is the data file that has been sent from the Grid Explorer. So it was generated internally, stored as an ASCII file on the computer and loaded in Data Studio. But you can, of course, also open any other ASCII text file into Data Studio in order to analyze it. So the big benefit is that once you open the data file in the Data Studio, for example, this has the extension .fx, Data Studio recognizes what kind of file is it, what is the content of the file. And for example, here it sees, oh, it's a Map Explorer file and it's for surface data because this is what it actually where it came from. We had a data file from the surfaces and we had explored them in the Map Explorer and then in the third step created um, a text file out of it. So here you see a list of different scripts. These are not too many for the moment, which are found in the library and which seem to match this kind of file. You can also say, okay, I want to see all scripts, including those which are not made for this type of file, so probably won't work properly, but in case you can just um, see them, or say only the context files, that means show me only the script files which have been made for this specific kind of file, because most of the time, the scripts address columns, variable names, and so on. So for example, there is the file surface energy, which is um, delivered with the MVMAT package, which is a simple um, script for showing how to plot components of the surface energy balance. So let's have a look at this script. We select that and say, copy that to the Python console. And this switches now to the second view of the data center, which is the Python view of it all. So here on that side of the screen, you see the actual Python script, so the, the Python code as it is. You can scroll through it, analyze it, and later on run it. Here you see some other tools. For example, you see the contents of the file. So this means these text files, when they go into Data Studio, are normally ASCII files, which are comma-separated files, CSV files. And these comma-separated files normally had the first line, which describes what are the contents of the different columns. And this is actually done because it's much easier for someone to code a visualization routine if there is a list which are the variables which are actually in the file. And so, so for example, um, we can load this file into the um, file from pandas and then have some very easy command, for example, plot the direct component of the surface energy balance by just looking how is it called in the file. For example, QSV direct, that's a short wave direct, uh, directive um, radiation. And we can also plot the sensible heat flux, the, sen the latent heat flux, on the soil heat flux, for example, just to have a few components um, of the um, surface energy, energy balance. And then we just say press execute and wait for some uh, seconds in order to load the file into the data of pandas. And there it is. And by default, we use an SVG file, which is a very universal and very uh, scalable format of vector files in order to show the plots. But as we are in Python, of course, you can use any export uh, format file Python supports, including the plot format, which is natively to Python. So then the Python um, window will pop up and show you the Python output. But especially for later versions of data center, um, we will have a lot of possibilities what we can do with these SVG files because later on we will be able to integrate them into the map. We can store them in a little collection book. But for now, this is just a, a little example. And what we see is exactly what we have um, 
ASK for, we see the components of the surface files, short wave direction, direct, diffuse, sensible heat flux, latent heat flux, and the soil heat flux for the time, all the time steps that are actually stored in this little ASCII file. And it's pretty easy to extend this file, for example, if I want also to see, um, for example, the, what, what can we see, the um, long wave radiative, the long wave radiation which, is, which is emitted. So we just make a copy, for example, out of this text here and add another component to the plot. So for now, it's just a, a copy of the soil heat flux. Of course, we do not want to have the soil heat flux twice. So we just remove the name from the soil heat flux here. Look into the list of the file. This is why it is made. And here, for example, here is the long wave radiation that is emitted. I can just press this button to copy that to the clipboard, move on over here and just paste it. So I do not, re not even have to consider how is the variable named. I just have just the list on the right hand side and just move it over. Um, we call it, say a color, which is not used yet, say for example, green. And we maybe also want to have a label for that so that it's a proper thing. Long wave emitted. So that's it. We just say execute. And uh, the new window is generated. It's now even more quicker because um, the pandas frame is already converted. And here it is. Here is my new variable, long wave radiation, emitted from the surface. You see how easy it is with just a few lines to analyze the data and you have access to any Python diagram you can think of. So line, line diagrams are really the most easiest way to do it. So let's have a look what other kinds of files from Envimet we can use in this data studio. So now let's have a look at uh, one of the typical output files that are generated from Envimet and which are not generated inside Leonardo. For example, the inflow files. So the inflow profiles, I've opened one here. So where you can have uh, information about the different variables like wind speed, air temperature, humidity, turbulence, and so on over the vertical profile from the ground up to 2,500 meters. So these are always stored for each simulation and you find them in the inflow folder. So I've opened one here. And you see these files are a bit adjust adjusted um, in the Envimet version 5 to the new needs of the Python interface. So we have changed a bit the uh, format of the um, columns. We hope before they were separated by spaces. Now they are all probably separated by comma. And also um, the headline, which describes the contents of the files are now properly formatted so that they fit the um, Python conditions for importing text files. So we just pick one of these inflow files here in the data studio. So we just now open the, the folder and we go just to one of the inflow files and doesn't matter which one you take and open them. And you see in the file context, it is recognized that um, there is a, this is a profile of the atmosphere at the inflow boundary. So this is fine. Um, unfortunately, yet there are no scripts for this kind of files to, for visualization, but that's not a problem because we will just easily create one. And it's just like, just to show you how easy it is. So I just copied the, the headings of the plot surface energy script we have just seen. So uh, basically it's just about importing the matplotlib, the numpy and the pandas and have, this is some standard formats. And basically it's just all these. So um, when we opened the file encoding tools, I said there is this little tool that shows me what are the columns of the data file so that I can easily use them. So for example, I want to make a plot where I see the wind speed in the vertical cut. So the two, variables are actually neat is the variable z for the vertical com coordinate of the grid point and the other coordinate for example the u component for the wind speed well the v component if you like so i will start over with the u component just use a very simple plot command and say plot df from the pandas data frame for the component u so the X axis now becomes the U component because the graph is rotated 90 degrees. And this Y axis will get the component Z, 
let it be purple, or we can also say make it blue. That's completely up to you. And also the, the style that is used for which kind of markers we would like. And of course, you see, this is a copy of the surface energy file. So of course, it's no longer the direct component, but it's the wind speed component U. So this, we can skip this. We don't need that. So just plot the legend. And that's a very, a very brief and very simple script. So just let's execute that. And you see how easy and how quickly you can visualize it. And this is very easy. So if you say, okay, I also want to have the V component in case it's something interesting on that. So we just make a little copy out of that. And just add the V component, say it in green and make it a proper label. And let's have a look at it. And there it is. And so last but not least, if we want, for example, to say, see the turbulent exchange coefficient, um, I've no idea how it is called in the file, but it's no problem because I can easily look it up. Hopefully it is in the file. And yes, it is in the file. This is, for example, the KM vertical with the turbulent exchange coefficient for, uh, for the vertical exchange of momentum. So let's add this as a third variable. We can just paste and copy because I'm very lazy. And no longer the V component is of interest. And in, in, as I'm completely lazy, I'm not even copying that one. So I just mark it, club it to the local clipboard and insert it again. And let the color be, I don't know, black. And the label should be KM. And here we go. And there it is, the vertical exchange coefficients. So it's pretty easy, isn't it? And of course, these are very, 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 very small and very, very simple line diagrams. So if you go to Pandas or to numplotlib, you see there is a huge range from 1D to 3D animation plots. We can have direct access here inside Leonardo. But wait, there's one more thing we can do with the Python scripting inside the application. When we talk about Python integration in our applications, well, the visualization or the creation of visual input or the statistical analysis of data is definitely one big thing that it makes it really easy or much more efficient to analyze NVMIT output data. But there is also a second aspect we can use Python for. And so we have exposed the complete application object to the Python language. So what does this mean? So let's take this little example here, which is called um, test. And this shows us how we can use our Python script to control the behavior and the action of the Leonardo application itself. So just copy that shortly to the Python console to show you what it's about. So we don't need any data files for the moment. So we just need the application. So just move that a bit in the, into the corner so that we can see what's actually happening. So, and, um, Inside this script, we expose all objects which are actually part of the application. And this is, there is, if we go to Leonardo object, a huge tree of objects, um, ones for the app itself and of the map, the map, which is basically what we produce in Leonardo with all the different fields, with all the different methods and with all the different property they have from the different layers. You can access the different legends, the different colors. So you have access to every object that is available. But of course, it's your responsibility to use them in the right way. So if you program nonsense and let the application crash, so don't blame NVMet for making the applica application the wrong way. So you have access to the complete object model of the Leonardo application, but you're also the captain of that boat then. So just a little example. So we import the map, which is the, the map, which you see in Leonardo and also the app, which is the application itself. And we can really easily change properties of the map. For example, map dot data layer addresses the data layer of the map, then dot legend. So we, use, we address the attached legend of the data layer and dot title say, we want to change the title of the 
legend. So it's very easy. Of course, you cannot learn that by heart, but we have the Explorer. So you can go into the data layer and see what fields does it have. And you see, oh, there is a field legend. And I can see what is in this field. And we can see all the properties and all the um, methods this field has. For example, it has a title. Here it is. So no need to guess. And here at the bottom, you see map data layer legend title. This is the way how you address the property of the map title for the data layer, or for the legend title of the data layer. And also, for example, we can change the number of the uh, number of colors that are used in the legend. And we can um, tell the software to use the first color the index with index zero. So basically what we normally do in the jury by clicking around. Set the data layer to visible. Also, we can change the title of the complete map and the color of the title. And finally, if we want to have some information, we can just for, for fun print out the number of X grids this map has. So let's have it a try. Let's just start it and have a look at the map in the background, which is still in its original shape as I have started it from the normal interface. So make it a bit smaller. Say execute. And you see the object has changed. I have changed the title. I have changed the, the color scale. I have changed the title of the map. And also here in the output terminal, you see that little print command. How many X grids does this map has? It's 316. So you see, this is a lot of useful application, especially when it comes to, to spaces, which is not integrated yet, but will be. So where you can easily program your genetic designs, or you, if you have the problem that you have to decrease all buildings by two meters or so, which was possible in some way before, but now it's really easy. And of course, you can add much more rules and intelligence to your scripts and to modify your input areas or to generate objects in Mont or to program your Leonardo map. So that's a small run through the new feature of Python in NVMet in its first application in Leonardo. And I really look forward to what you guys will do out of it.